Welcome back to Holistic Developer Channel. I'm Anna. I hope you are having a good time. Today, it's another Q&A kind of uh, type of video. I'm going to answer one question in particular, and that probably will be appreciated by many people who are planning to move somewhere, move to United States or from United States, move to Canada uh, or move to Australia or London or any other continent or country or like whatever you decide to do. So the question in particular is like, I got an email uh, from a person. <laughs> I don't know if he wants to be in, his name be public, but the subject is relocating to United States and email is that, hi Anna, I watch a couple of your YouTube videos, mostly about software developer lifestyle. You mentioned in some of your videos that you left everything and moved to United States. And at the end of January, my wife and I will be moving to United States and we are leaving Europe. You mentioned in some of your videos that you did some something similar five or ten years ago. We're moving to New York City or Boston area, so my question is where to start and how to find a job. I don't want to bother you with my resume, but let's say that I have eight years plus of experience and that I already worked for US clients before. Do you have any tips for me or would you recommend me something you wish you knew when you first land in the US and how any help will be appreciated. Oh my God, um, remembering going back to 10 years ago, relocated to United States is definitely, relocating is not easy, definitely. And in my case, it was challenging because I didn't know uh, English that well. Everything was left behind. I didn't have real experience in tech. Obviously for me, I graduated and moved here and tried to find a job recently graduated. Uh, so that is a lot, kind of another level of um, challenges. What I'm trying to say is that immediately after I got to United States, I tried to get a job in tech. I applied to a lot of companies. I was lucky that I saw a lot of conversion, meaning that I applied and I'll get interviews. The part that I was really, really challenged with is that I didn't understood the technical questions because the problem for me it was that when uh, I was studying for computer science, I was studying in a Romanian language. Obviously, the concepts and stuff like that, they are the same for programming, but it's a different level of abstraction or something like that, complexity when you are in an interview and you don't feel comfortable with the language, you kind of not, not sure, like, is that the correct, like, am I translating this correctly or not? So that was a, one of the biggest challenges for me for the longest time, I could not find a job. So I was getting a lot of interviews. I was failing miserably on in a lot of them and I was failing because I was not confident that I understand the topic that they're asking and I didn't know what to answer and when I was a lot of times I did have the answer but because I was not confident I preferred not to answer like my preference was like I would prefer not to to look stupid I would prefer to, to be quiet. So that was not the correct mindset. So what I'm trying to say that make sure that you are familiar with the, the interviewing processes in the United States. The interview process is like you have, you apply for the job, your resume is accepted and reviewed. You get into the phone stage interview, the phone screen, uh, then you have usually a technical interview and then you have an on-site interview. So make sure that you are familiar with the concepts, what you're going to be asked and so on. But the question first is like, how do you get the job, right? How do you apply? A lot of times when you apply in call, like directly apply, a lot of times you might not hear anything at all, or sometimes it takes time to hear from them. So definitely um, allow yourself some time to hear back and go through the process. It might take a few months. So don't expect that you will get a job immediately. It might happen, but that's definitely not the case. So be prepared for a lot of jobs uh, that might not be in tech. So that's got kind of what I did. Uh, I tried for probably six months to get a job in tech. I was not able to do that immediately. So I was, um, I needed to pay, like we were needed to pay for rent and so on. So we find, found a job that was paying the bill, but I was still continuing to look for a, a tech job. And a lot of times uh, after a while, obviously I was getting better at interviews. One of the things that 
uh, in retrospect that I know for a fact that if I would have done that would have helped me uh, tremendously it was the fact of networking there are a lot of resources right now obviously we don't do that we cannot do them in person anymore but that's the advantage of the online there's a lot of meetup organization like meetup events that you can join so because you know that you will be moving, let's say, to New York or Boston area, you can check out the meetup events that are happening um, for your industry that you're interested in. Are, there, are you on security? Are you on web development? Are you, like, depending on what area you are, you can find the events on meetup for that area and start joining them right now. Get to know a few people, network. Practically, the majority of jobs, software engineering jobs that people get now, they are as a result of networking so make sure that you you do that um, like meetup.com and then there's like everbright.com so make sure that in advance you start to network you start to get to know people so that kind of will kind of you will start like when you get here in a few months when you're in the united states you will already have a, a few contact points you'll kind of have a perspective of what's going on and it will help you with the interviews so that's the, the kind of a tip that i definitely recommend you to have I also try to create a, your profile your linkedin profile and stuff like that like if there's not a secret sauce it ever takes time for me what actually kind of did it it was that i tried for the longest time to get a job in software engineering and i I kind of was not able to do that and I was trying to do that by myself. I didn't have any contact information. I didn't, I was not networking or anything like that. So I was alone. I didn't have anybody like to relate to. I didn't know what is expected or not expected. Um, so I was not doing YouTube videos. I was, I mean, I was not watching any YouTube like interviews or anything like that because back then it was kind of not something that I knew it's a resource. So I was like working full time and then trying to uh, to find a job and that was not an easy thing. And finally, I decided, okay, I won't try anymore to do into software engineering. I'll try to get in my foot door, my foot in the door as a tester. So what I decided to do is that I joined a class. It was a QA uh, class. So I was trying to get uh, certified as a as a tester, software tester. And it was something that like the classes twice a week or something like that after work. And during that time, I learned a lot about testing. It was not a lot that I didn't know, but it was something that I could relate to people. I, I chatted with them. I heard about their experience, where they came from. And there were a lot of people uh, in, those, in that class, uh, surprisingly from uh, Eastern Europe and other, other countries. Um, and a lot of them had tons of experience already in software engineering and they were not able to find a job. So they decided to get in, into testing the same as I was doing. And for me, it was like a shocking to, under, to hear that people with 10 years of experience in, let's say, Russia, really good experience in software engineering, they were not able to get a job here. And that being said, it doesn't mean that they were not capable. They were just not able, like they were not familiar with the process. They didn't know what is the interview process. You have to pass an interview in order to do the job. And a lot of times the interview process is not a representation of what you will do at the job. So you have to pass that interview. So what I'm trying to say with that is that at the end of the course, I got two job offers and one was for software engineering test and another one was for software engineering. And like, how is that possible for that a course at quality assurance that me two offers in a sh such short period of time when prior to that for a year, I was not able to find a job in software engineering. And one a reason that I can think of is that uh, it helped me understand what is the process, what they're paying attention to. So we had a course, during that course, we had a section where we were trained to pass an interview. And during those interviews, we were like, you get a question, how would you test an elevator or how would you test a um, toaster or something like that, behavioral questions and stuff like that. So that training helped me, that training how to act and how to answer interview questions, it was something that helped me to get the job in software engineering. It's like 
it was not a training in software engineering, it was training of how to do interviews that actually got me the job. So what I'm trying to say, um, you might have all the experience in the world, you can be really good at what you do, but if you're not acting correctly, you're, if you're not answering correctly, and if you're not doing the interviews correctly, it will be really challenging. If I were to kind of wrap this up and give you two tips is like, understand the process, understand the interviewing process, make sure that you're doing good on that. And the second one is to make sure that you start networking, network right now, um, do meetup.com and try to do ever, everbright.com. There are a lot of hackathons that you can do as well. They are online right now. Also that kind of can lead into some uh, job opportunities. Another thing that I said, I said that this too, but they're keep coming, I would recommend, again, uh, make sure that your LinkedIn profile is up to date and start um, applying for jobs on LinkedIn, stop applying for jobs on built-in, let's say Chicago or New York or something like that, those good resources. And another thing is that you said that you already have clients, that you worked with US clients again, make sure that you can get recommendations from them and see if they need a potential like employee in the next in the near future. So there's not one way of doing this, not one right way or wrong way. There are different, diff definitely different ways. Make sure that your paperwork is in, in order because one thing that I got challenged with is that uh, I think early on I had an offer in testing and my social security card DN came in in time, so I was not able to, to pursue that opportunity. I hope this video provided some clarity, and if you have any other questions, feel free to send them my way, and either I'll reply in the comments or email, or I'll create a video just like this. Hopefully that will be helpful to a lot of people, because a lot of people are moving and looking for a job is not easy, especially it's, it's even harder if you're new to the industry, new to the country and new to the environment. So hopefully this can alleviate the pain and help provide some perspective. See you in the next video. Bye bye.